Welcome to the Edge of Greatness podcast. Because I, I notice a lot of people, especially for me, I, I have a baseball background. So a lot of people have taken the mental approach and applied it to baseball recently. It's become a really big thing. And especially like for hitters, like between pitches, you see them like stare at their barrel and take a deep, deep breath. Um, I don't know if you've ever read the Heads Up Baseball book. Yeah. That's um, the Bible. That's yeah. the baseball Bible for mental well, training. Ken Revisa. Exactly. And he obviously talks a lot about resetting yourself and getting yourself back to green or even trying to work to compete with yellow. And so I like the breathing idea because I think a lot of people, when they get panicked, they don't slow their mind down to breathe. And then they all of a sudden are breathing heavier and more and then it gets out of control and they lose it. So okay. um, when we get into a game situation, obviously, though, it, it becomes a little different because it's, sometimes it's harder to like slow your mind down because the game's moving so fast. Mm -hmm. So what do you have as far as maybe are there any mental drills you do to help people understand how to deal with failure or adversity in those types of situations? Sure. And part of that's going to depend on the nature of the sport. So if you're in a okay. sport that has natural breaks in play, like baseball, football, right. volleyball, tennis, right? So after each point, you have a moment. Sometimes mm -hmm. moments a little bit longer than others. That's going to be different than sports like basketball, soccer, where it's just a continuous play and you don't have that time, right? You just, you have to keep your mind where it is. You don't have time to process what just happened or you're, the ball's gone and yeah. you're, you're not going to be able to perform, right? So those are going to be different depending on the nature of the sport that you're in. So the easier one, obviously, is the breaks in play because you have that time to kind of get your mind in the right place where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be there and to slow yourself down. And so getting into those breaks in play, yeah, it definitely comes back to the breathing, but it also comes back to the, what are you saying to yourself in those moments? What is it that you are preparing yourself to do? Are you stuck in the past of what just happened? Or do you take, maybe you take a learning lesson if you have a moment to take that and are you focused more on the next play? And we know the most important play in any sport is always the next play, always. And so right. getting your mind into that next play is going to be imperative. And so, you know, if you, you can go back to Ken Revisa's Heads Up Baseball, and I don't mean to leave off Tom Hansen, of course, but you know, <laughs> Ken, I mean, Ken just, oh, I miss that man so much. He passed away a couple years ago, and it's right. just, uh, he was just such an amazing, amazing human being that I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to call a friend. Um, but if you look at some of his stuff, you can use it in any sport where he talks about releases, like doing something to physically release the last play. And like you're talking about, you know, hitters staring at the barrel of their bat and taking that breath. You know, what Ken talks about in his book essentially is like, what's your execution? What's your plan? What do you plan? What do you intend to do? So as they're looking at the barrel, they're thinking about, you know, line drive down the middle or something like that. Like what, what is their intention? And mm -hmm. that breath is keeping you in the present moment. And so that's a super simple way to kind of release some of that negativity. Um, he does things like, or he talks a lot in that book, some of his releases for hitters are use what you're already doing physically. So if you tend to, you know, unstrap and restrap your gloves, the Velcro on your gloves, you can use that and put a mental meaning to it. So essentially as you take, as you unstrap the glove, you're taking off the last pitch. And then as you put the Velcro back on and restrap, it's like, I'm putting on the next pitch, time to focus, time to go. So you have that time between plays to kind of get your mind in the right space, right? Yeah. Now, if you don't have that time, basketball, soccer, you know, whatever it is that you're playing that you don't have that time until the ball goes out of bounds or, you know, the foul called or something. A lot of times what I'll do is just have people in that moment, something happens and their mind is stuck in the past. Just start commentating in your head what's going on around you. So-and-so has the ball, run to the corner, get to the open space, find the defender. You know, whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing in that moment, commentate in your mind. Because what's that's, what that will do is get your mind into that present moment rather than stuck in the past. And all of this, Charles, is based on two big things about our brain that we know to be, to be true that are really important when it comes to performance. And the first one is at any one moment in time, you can only have one thought in your head. We switch back and forth between thoughts very rapidly, but in that forefront conscious part of your mind, if I took a snapshot of your brain, there's only one thought. That's it. You only get one. The second thing to know is that forefront conscious part of your mind, we call that the law of occupied space. And basically what that means, and notice we said law of occupied space, which means we know this is true, okay? It is a law. So basically what, what that means is that forefront conscious part of your mind where that one thought resides will always be occupied with something. There's always something there. So even when you think you're turning off your brain and not thinking anything, there's something there. Mm -hmm. It might not be a thought, 
It might be more that that part of your brain is tuned into how your body feels. You might not be aware of what that thought is or what that feeling is, but there is something there. So if we bring that into what I was just talking about, you know, people tell me all the time, I'm at my best when I think nothing. And so I say, okay, great, but you can't not think anything, <laughs> right? Even think right. of a like black wall or so, you're still thinking something, there's still something there. So the closest thing to zero is one. What's the one thought that you want to have in that forefront conscious part of your mind that's going to help you be at your best in these moments? And then also the way you keep out the negative, the adversity, the mistakes, the beating yourself up, the way you stop thinking those things is by starting to think something else. Get your mind somewhere else. And basically there's only room for one and it pushes out those other thoughts. And if you keep your mind focused on that one, such as commentating the game, the ball's here, run there, get here, defend here, get into position, shoot, you know, whatever it might be, you're not thinking those other things. And typically the flow of the game will eventually come into play and replace that thought process. So then you're just into the game. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ways you can kind of get out of some of those negative funks in those continuous sports like basketball and soccer.